Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel Unique Bio Classes based on NCRT syllabus for PUC first and second year. Okay, if you like my channel, please subscribe, like and share and hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications as soon as videos are getting uploaded. Okay guys, we shall start today's video. In today's video, I, sh I am going to discuss about the post fertilization restructure and events. In the previous uh, video, I have discussed about this double fertilization. We have completed this. We shall proceed with the next. In the post fertilization of uh, this development, it includes events of endosperm formation, embryonic development, maturation of ovule into seeds and ovary into fruit. Okay, which means on the whole total four events are going to take place one is formation of endosperm another one is embryonic development another one is conversion of ovule into seed and ovary into fruit okay in this post fertilization event we are discussing these events in detail first we shall start with the endosperm now what is this endosperm endosperm we said if you remember this structure which we have discussed in the previous class in this uh, primary in, in this embryonic matured embryo you will find there is presence of primary endospermic nucleus and primary endospermic cell we have said that this is a triple fusion okay now this nucleus and a cell will start its division to form endosperm and endosperm is filled with the reserve food materials the cells present in this will be filled with a reserve food material and that reserve food material will be used for the nutrition of the developing embryo where embryo will be developed this one this here the zygote which is present towards the micropyle end towards this zygote will start its division to form this embryo now when it is undergoing division then it requires some food or it requires some nourishment and that nourishment is provided by this primary endospermic cell and a primary endospermic nucleus so if we found that one here it appears something like this as we have shown primary endospermic nucleus okay i am writing in short primary endospermic nucleus and this will be primary endospermic cell uh, i am showing zygote is present here okay now this is zygote zygote is present here now zygote will won't start its division till endosperm is formed now this primary endospermic nucleus what does it do it will start its division it will start its division so that this nucleus will start to divide and it starts to form multi nucleus which means many number of nucleus will be formed this is a mitotic division only but it does not undergo cellular uh, or cytokinesis only karyokinesis takes place so that it forms many number of nucleus when only nucleus have been formed that type of endosperm we have types of endosperm okay types of endosperm in that types of endosperm first one is we can give nuclear endosperm nuclear endosperm now nuclear endosperm is called for that endosperm where which consists of only nucleus the one nucleus which we have shown here that one nucleus will continue its division to form many number of nucleus when only nucleus are formed we call it as a nuclear endosperm which consists of many number of free nuclei second one second one we call it as cellular endosperm okay second one we call it as cellular endosperm the name itself shows cellular means now cells are formed nuclear means nucleus are formed now cellular endosperm in the here what nucleus we have shown these nucleus will undergo cytokinesis now it is followed by cytokinesis so that it starts to form many number of cells each nucleus will form its own cell wall so now this nuclear uh, endosperm will be converted into cellular endosperm if a uh, endosperm is present in the form of cellular we call it a cellular endosperm if it of only free nuclear we call it as nuclear endosperm okay now for this you can take an example of tender coconut water tender coconut water okay now tender coconut water it is nothing but a nuclear endosperm why doctors will ask you all to uh, drink tender coconut water when you are sick or something so uh, why because tender coconut water will consist of lot of reserve food material which can be used as a nourishment for our body okay actually the tender coconut water it is an endosperm it is a reserve food material which is provided it should be used for the provide providing nutrition for the developing embryo this zygote which is present it will be utilizing this endosperm okay either it might be uh, nuclear or either it might be cellular whichever endosperm is there it will be used by this zygote uh, but here tender coconut water it is nuclear endosperm and uh, the kernel of the coconut that white part of the coconut later after that coconut is getting matured 
okay kernel of the coconut the white part of the coconut that coconut is cellular endosperm first it will be tender uh, first it will be nuclear endosperm without water later as water is getting dried up so it is why it is getting dried up because that nucleus is getting converted to cells so that cells will be converted a uh, will be uh, white colored and that we call this kernel of the coconut so for example for nuclear endosperm we can give tender coconut water for cellular endosperm we can give kernel of the coconut okay now if a question arises what will be the ploidy of endosperm okay what will be the ploidy of endosperm what do you say whether it is haploid diploid triploid what it is now earlier we have said that it consists of primary endospermic nucleus and primary endospermic cell uh, these are triploid why triploid because of triple fusion in triple fusion we have said that two male uh, one male one of the male gamete is going to fuse with the two polar nuclei so it was triploid now the nucleus which was formed earlier it was triploid and the other cells which have been formed definitely it will be triploid so all the cells which will be formed all are triploid so what will be the ploidy of endosperm it is triploid so this endosperm is formed from which cell the endosperm which has been formed now it is formed from which cell it is formed from primary endospermic cell okay it is formed from primary endospermic cell did you got this okay now here in some of the plants there is present some of the seeds endosperm will be completely consumed endosperm will be completely consumed okay so here you can find the zygote as we have shown here the zygote as it is growing and as it is continuous and uh, continuously dividing with the mitosis to form an embryo it is utilizing this endosperm okay some of the zygote or some of the embryo will completely utilize all the endosperm no endosperm will be left over in the seed in some of those what happens that zygote will utilize as much as wants and some of the endosperm will be left as it is in the seed okay some seeds consist of endosperm some seeds does not consist of endosperm the seeds which consist of endosperm we call it as albuminous okay the seeds which consist of endosperm we call it as albuminous seeds and seeds which does not consist of uh, endosperm we call it as non albuminous seeds while discussing about uh, seeds and its types there i shall discuss it again now if endosperm is completely consumed in a seed we call it as non albuminous if endosperm is left over then we call it as albuminous seeds example for uh, non albuminous seeds are pea groundnut groundnut and beans whereas uh, if uh, there is a persistence of some endosperm then the we are giving example as castor and coconut so many more examples you can give from a uh, text okay so this is the types of endosperm nuclear endosperm cellular endosperm example for it and what will be the ploidy it is triploid and the non albuminous and albuminous seeds sometimes endospermic or non endospermic seeds so hope you are, have got this one now we have discussed only about endosperm okay till now what we have discussed only about endosperm now how does this zygote is getting converted to embryo that we shall discuss so next one is embryo okay next one we shall discuss about embryo so before that about endosperm you have in your textbook as it starts from here okay about endosperm and uh, it is completely here about endosperm you have about the free nuclear endosperm you have about cellular endosperm you have about the coconut water every detail information is that you can go through your textbook and about the uh, that albumin acids here it has not mentioned as albumin acids but you can get that information endosperm may be either be completely consumed by the developing embryo example and uh, persist in the mature state uh, its example okay so as the information is there no need to panic next next as i was saying about embryo we shall discuss about that embryo okay so here the embryo which is formed uh, this zygote which we have said now that zygote will continue its division and it is forming this kind of embryo okay this is a mature embryo this is a globular shape hard shape and a mature embryo now this uh, this process it will be similar in both monocots and dicots okay 
the process of development of an embryo will be similar we have above zygotes and monocots so for that we call it as embryogenic in point that one here okay the early stages of embryo development is called as embryogenic you can get one mark question what is embryogenic so it is this now what we said earlier that uh, zygotes will start its division then when endosperm has been formed so what endosperm we have discussed till now that endosperm is formed first then it continues with the zygote division okay now that is zygote which here with the diagram picture which has been shown it is about zygote embryo how does it develop but early stages of the development of an embryo will remain same in both, book, um, both zygotes and monocots so that's why it is called as embryogenic okay so now here in your textbook they have shown about the dicot embryo this is the dicot embryo how it appears okay it consists of three males two cotyledons and a hypocotyl radical and a root cap okay so this is the embryo uh, this dicot embryo okay dicot embryo it consists of two parts which one one is embryonal axis and second one is two cotyledons okay there are presence of two cotyledons the portion above the level of embryonal axis is called as epicotyl now embryonal axis in that you can find two portions one is epicotyl another one is hypocotyl okay now this epicotyl it is having it, it terminates with a female Okay, plumel as you know, plumel will grow into stem or a uh, shoot, whereas hypocotyl it is going to terminate at the lower end and terminating with the radical or root cap. Okay, now as you know, radical will develop into a root and plumel will develop into a shoot. Okay, so embryonal axis consists of epicotyl, hypocotyl, plumel, and uh, it is having the upper region. Uh, it terminates with the upper part called as plumel. And uh, hypocotyl it terminates with the lower region called as radical, which develops into root. So for that you can find in this structure, this is the dicot embryo. This portion we call it as embryonal axis. Now this embryonal axis you can find. This portion we call it as epicotyl. In this epicotyl, <coughs> in, in this epicotyl there is a portion uh, which is going to terminate with the plumule. This portion is the hypocotyl, which is the cylindrical portion, and it is uh, uh, going to terminate with the lower portion called as radical, which is having with the root cap, which will develop into the root. Now, these are the two cotyledons. Now, as you know, cotyledons they are two with the reserve food material, uh, which help for the development of the or germination of the seed and development of the plant. Okay, this diagram is important. They have asked this one for two marks to draw. Now, such uh, difficulty to draw that so we can easily draw that diagram. Okay, next we have about monocot embryo. You can find this is a monocot embryo. Now, uh, this monocot embryo it consists of two telum. Uh, it possesses only monocot embryo, consists monocot consists of only one uh, cotyledon, as you all know. So, that cotyledon here it is called as two telum. In most of the graphs, we call it as two telum. And uh, in the graph family, the cotyledon is called as two telum. And uh, that is situated towards one side. This is situated towards the one side of the lateral of the embryonal axis. At its lower end of the embryonal axis, again you can find there is presence of radical and the root cap. This is covered with an undifferentiated sheet called a seal visor. Uh, this is providing protection for the radical. And above the level of this embryonal axis, there is presence of uh, a leaf primordia. This leaf primordia or a shoot apex, it is covered by the seal of fact. As the seal riser is providing protection for the root cap and the radical, like that seal of is providing protection for the this shoot apex and the leaf primordia. This shoot apex or leaf primordia later will develop into a leaf and a uh, stem other parts. This radical and a root cap, radical will develop into root and it comes from root cap. Okay, so these are what pseudo riser and pseudoptal they are providing protection. Now, this diagrammatic representation also has been asked and it was there in your first year syllabus also. So, this is an LS of an embryo of a grass. Okay, it is a monocot embryo, but they have given us embryo of a grass. So, you know, it is a section of an embryo of a grass. So they can ask this diagram. They have asked this diagram to draw. So very easy diagram. So please practice this diagram. With that, they have asked differences between epicotyl and a hypocotyl, and they have asked differences between coelophyll and a coelophyzer. Every detailed information is there in your textbook. Please go through that. Okay. So here you can find about uh, uh, this paragraph is of dicot embryo. This paragraph 
15 the next page if you have here this is about monocot entry okay so i should stop here if you have any doubts in this we should discuss uh, you can comment in the comment box and in my next video i will discuss about the seed okay stay safe stay healthy